All right. And before we start working with URL parameters, let's also see how we can set up active links. And effectively, what that means is that once we're on the page, this link will have specific styling, whatever we want to set up. And in order to do that, I will create a new file, just so this typical setup stays for your reference. And instead of link, we want to grab the nav link. Now what's special about the nav link is the fact that in style, and also in a class name, we can pass in the function where there's a property by the name of is active. Again, this is provided right away by react router. And then based on that value, we can set up some type of styling. Again, this is the straight up inline CSS approach. But we can also do that with classes. And of course, we'll take a look at both examples. Let's start working on the main setup first, where in the components, let's create styled navbar. And again, the reason why I'm setting up a separate file is just so you have right away a reference for the basic setup. Let's copy and paste again, we're looking for nav link instead. And let's change these suckers as well. So we're looking for nav link. For now, let's not do anything. Let's not add any kind of logic. We simply want to navigate to ba 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 app.js. Or I'm sorry, what app.js shared layout, my bad. And I'll copy and paste. And I'll just say shared layout, shared, or I'm sorry, not shared layout. For some reason, I'm totally tripping here. So styled and then navbar, of course, my apologies. And for some reason, I didn't change this one as well. And uh, instead of typical navbar, let's go here with styled navbar. And once we save, we right away notice that our active link gets different styling. And first, let's just quickly cover why is that happening. And second, we'll take a look at the code that controls that. So first, why is that happening? Well, again, by default, if we use that nav link, the react router by default, even without us doing anything, adds this class of active to it. And if you take a look at index CSS, and more specifically, if you just keep on scrolling somewhere around the nav bar, you'll find this active class. So if you just set up an active class, if you use nav link, the class will be automatically added. And as a result, you'll get these styles. So now let's see how we can control that code a little bit more. First of all, let me close all my files and all that here. So let me start from scratch, I think it's getting quite busy. And let's just take a look. Now we can add good old regular CSS to it. So I'm in the style nav bar, then we want to go with style over here. And I'm not going to add to all of them. But I will showcase for the home one. So I'm going to go with style. I want to go with interpolation. And like I said, we want to pass here the function. Again, this function, the value and all that is provided by react router DOM. Now keep in mind, this is not just good old parameter here. So don't say is active, we need to specifically look for object and then is active. That's how we can properly access that. And then since we're setting up here inline styles, we can just use a ternary operator where we go with a return. So whatever we return in this object will be applied to this link. And more specifically, I want to look for the color. And then I want to check is active. So what is the value? So if it is true, I want to add color red. And if it's not, then I want to go with gray. Please keep in mind that we can set up whatever functionality you want over here. I'm just going for straight up color, of course, if you prefer setting up your CSS in line, you can add whatever the properties with values you want. And now check it out. If we navigate to home page, the style will be red. So the color of the link was going to be red. And yes, if we add this to the rest of the links, it's also going to work. I already set up the reference for you over here. So in my case, in the style nine bar, I'll just showcase the class approach. Since in my opinion, that's 
probably is going to be something you will use more often. So if you ever need this reference, it's available in the readme. So let me remove this style here. And now instead of style, I'm going to go with class name. And if we take a look at the CSS, you'll notice that not only I have the active one, I also have some general style for the link. And yes, of course, like I keep repeating, you would normally add more code over here. So instead of just relying on the active one, I'll say, all right, what is the value for is active? If it's true, then I want to add link class, as well as the active one. Basically, this is where I'll have more styles normally. And if it's not, then it's just going to be link class, which just gives those general styles. So let's try this one out where again, we're going for the function. In the function, we're looking for the object, and then we go with is active. And then let's set up that ternary operator, where we want to go with is active. And you know what, I think in this case, I'm just going to go with implicit return. So is active, if it's the case, then I'm going to go with link and active. And then if it's not, then I'm just going to go with link one, I do want to grab this entire thing. So copy, hopefully there are no bugs there. And then let's just set up on all of these ones. Let's save, this is going to be our default setup. And then once we click, now, of course, we get that active class as well. And as you saw, there's multiple ways how we can set up. If you just have the active class, it will be added by default to that nav link. So technically, you don't need to do anything. But most likely, you will set up the class approach. Also, keep in mind that of course, you do have this inline CSS option as well. Most importantly, you have nav link, then the function, then object in the object you have is active. And then you can use this value to set up your logic.